everyone. Thank you again for joining Ros Dreher and Shelley Davenport. We're delighted to have you again for our afternoon tea. I'm obviously Ros and Shelley is probably below you on your screen. <laughs> I hope she is. But we're also joined this time by Karen Peterson, special guest, our first guest in fact, yay. And she's also known as our local wino. She likes a lot of wine. But we're not going to talk about wine today. We're actually going to talk about wine cellars. She's going to give us some good, concise advice. So without further ado, hi Shelley, hi Karen. Karen, please take it away. Great. Thank you, Roz. Thank you, Shelley. So I am not a wine professional, but I am a wino, as Roz had said. And my husband and I love to collect wine. Um, if we find a bottle we like, why stop at one bottle? We usually buy a quantity and we really enjoy watching that bottle of wine or set of bottles of wine evolve as time goes on. And because of that, we like to say we have a consumption problem. We buy too much wine and we don't drink it all. And that started us on the journey of wine cellars. And um, we are, um, we have a wine cellar. We have a couple of wine cellars and are in the process of designing and building another one. So um, I'm here to share with you some of the information that I've learned on my journey to wine cellars and wine storage. Um, the first thing, if you are thinking about a wine cellar that I think you need to do is um, you need to identify the space and understand exactly where you are going to put the wine cellar. And to do that, I think you should be thinking about form and function. You know, there are many different reasons why you might want a wine cellar. And those would lead you to different answers as far as where you want to put it and, and how much money you want to spend and actually how you want to design it. So some considerations are, are you looking for a showcase? Is this going to be a piece of decorative art in some respects where you want to share it with your friends, you've got wine in there, and, but you want it to be somewhere in your house that has a place of prominence and of interest? Um, or are you looking for something that's much more functional and you, like us, have a consumption problem and you're just looking for a way that you can put those special bottles of wine down for 10, 20, 30 years and you want to make sure that it's kept in the best and most pristine condition so that when you pull it out, you have the greatest chance of having a fantastic bottle of wine. Um, you, you should consider what are the enemies of wine and that goes into the form for function as well is that light is a very big enemy of wine. Um, there are flaws that occur in wine if you have sunlight hitting it. So putting a wine cellar in the middle of a very bright room um, without any protection is not necessarily a good idea. In addition, temperature and especially temperature fluctuations are a problem. They will cause the wine to age in an inappropriate manner and in many cases, um, could lead to a cooked flavor or an overaged wine. Um, temperature fluctuation is definitely um, the biggest problem, but you also, if you're going to have a wine cellar and seriously collect for a long period of time, you're looking at having a, a temperature of between 55 and 58 degrees, which I know for me, we don't keep our house at that temperature. So you'll have to be thinking about, okay, how do I actually cool at that temperature, which is warmer than a standard refrigerator as well. And finally, vibration. Um, this one is probably a little bit more esoteric, but the idea of having it in a busy area, if you've got your babies that are sitting there in deep storage, you want them to be without vibration. Um, also, you wanna consider what size, you know, how big do you need a wine cellar to be? Now, some of that you might be constrained because you only have a closet or you have a space in the basement um, or something like that. But that's gonna be very important is considering where do you have space, how much space do you wanna allocate and how much are you gonna spend on the renovation in order to put the cellar in. And then another consideration is permanency. You know, one of the options is actually to get a standalone um, wine cellar as they call it. You could buy that and then if you're moving around to various places, you can take it with you. So you're not spending that money and then basically relying on the next person that's buying your house or your apartment to actually pay you for that wine cellar that you built. In general, for us winos, we know that we probably won't get the return on investment in building a wine cellar and selling the house. Now, granted, it's an attractive thing when people are looking at buying a house, 
But for those that are very passionate and are spending a significant amount on a wine cellar, you probably won't get your money back. Um, if you are looking at that temperature, you're gonna to wanna to think about temperature control system, which means you're going to have to engineer the room so that you probably have the ability to have that cooling system because there are specific wine cooling systems so that it can actually be vented to the outside. And then you wanna consider where are you going to get the wine cellar from? Um, there are many places you could go down, you know, when I started a wine cellar, I went down to, you know, one of these local hardware stores and bought the actual racking and just had the, had the wine in a, a closet to begin with, or a basement since we are in Virginia and it's very easy to have cooler basements than we have the rest of the house. But there are some various, um, you can go anywhere from the very inexpensive of going down to, you know, going down to your hardware store to having a design. There are wine cellar design houses. And in the middle, there are various websites you can go to to find many different things. You can find the racking, design services, et cetera. And a couple that I would like to mention are IWA, which is International Wine Accessories, or WineRacks.com. And finally, I want to leave you with some examples of some wine cellars just to get you thinking about possibly what you might want to do. So with that, I'm going to share my screen and show you a few things. Okay, now this can be many different sizes and here what you can see is a very traditional wine cellar. A lot of the cellars have storage in a couple of different ways. Number one, you're going to want to single bottles. So here you can see up here, these are all single bottle storage. You're putting one bottle in there. And that's really good if you're buying the onesie twosie. But if you're buying in volume, like I said that we always have a challenge, you're gonna to wanna to have possibly some of these diamonds like this, which allows you to do anything from eight to 12 bottles together. Um, and it takes up less storage than the single bottles, than that number of single bottles. And then over here to the left, you can see where you could actually have cases. So if you're buying very high-end Bordeaux or even Napa Cab, a lot of times they're shipping them in very beautiful boxes that you might want to keep the, the wine in. And, and having it there, that gives you the, the space to actually do it there. Um, secondarily, you want to think about what size bottles are you going to have. Now, many of us are very used to the standard 750 milliliter bottle, right? That's what we usually have. But we have anything up to nine, 27 liters I've even seen. And depending on your collection, you wanna be thinking about, do I need special storage? Personally, I have a lot of magnums. That's, that's a bottle, two bottles basically. And we have a lot of magnum storage for those bottles because they don't fit in the regular storage um, like, the, like the 750 milliliters. And finally, to mention having a table, um, if you are bringing cases, if you're buying cases and bringing them down, if you want to show people your wine cellar and want to bring a bottle out and present it, having a table in the middle is very nice. But this is a very good example of a very traditional, you know, oak, stained oak. You've got some, some really pretty tile. You've got some, some stonework on, um, on the entryway there. You know, very beautiful there. Um, A second example, another one, another beautiful one, very traditional. So just wanted to show another example of a traditional wine cellar. Again, these are quite large. I'd, I'd estimate this is probably 2,000, 2,500 bottles you could store in something like this. But you don't have to go that high end. And this is still a nice cellar, but you'll notice that it doesn't have quite the, the engineering, the, the high end gloss, the beauty of, of the other one. And, and you could put something like this with just standard racks into a, into your basement or into a closet. And then here's a, a little bit more, you know, uh, a, a little bit more contemporary look. You know, you might wanna add glass to it and look at this, this shelving is not that standard wood racking. You can get anything from here, the bottles actually are, are actually are parallel to the wall. So storing them like that is a really nice treatment. You don't have as much storage, but for a small space, this could be a really nice way to do it. Um, or something fun, you know, here, um, actually, when we built one of our cellars, we considered building something where we could actually go from the first floor into the basement and actually access the wine that way. It's kind of a fun thing if you're entertaining to show people, you know, and, and to access your wine without going down the traditional stairs. And then if you have a smaller space, look at areas that, you know, maybe aren't used very much, but 
you could put a wine cellar. I love this having it under the stairs. I think it'd be really fun to actually be able to, you know, walk over and, and use some space that probably was, you know, just junk storage before. And then what we're seeing a lot of now is people are making these wine cellars conversation pieces. In these two examples, what you see is they're not even associated with the dining room or anything like that. They become walls or, or a piece of art almost in showing you, you know, the beautiful bottles of wine that you have. Now, I did mention light and how light is a, you know, is the enemy of good wine. So um, you can UV protect your glass in order to do this. So I didn't want to sound incongruous in saying you should be careful about light and then showing these beautiful pictures. And then one that's become incredibly popular over the past five years has been incorporating it into your dining room. And here's a couple of examples of that. You know, just being able to open the wine cellar and pull a bottle of wine out when you're eating dinner um, would be a very attractive consideration. And so with that, I'm gonna leave you and turn this back over to Roz. Roz? Well, thank you, Karen, wow. <laughs> and I thought I knew a bit from knowing you, but apparently I didn't. This has been really, really good information. I really, really appreciate it. So um, that was wonderful. Are we allowed to invite you back to talk about something else about wine at some point? We'd love to. I know, I muted her, sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you again, everyone. So it's bye from me and bye from Shelley and bye from Karen. Thank you. Bye-bye.